This is Pusa Activity Kanak Kanak Jake, which is the oldest centre amongst the three different places. Um, and this is our living room where we greet our guests. That's a toy library. These are like boxes um, given during over Christmas for different children. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy with her work, uh, her empathy. You know, she didn't, she didn't sympathize. You know, she, she took it all in. So sometimes I quarrel with her because I said, "Tini, you must have your own life. You must be, uh, you focus, you help wherever you can." No, 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 no. Uh, we have been chased by, <laughs> by, uh, by uh, a lullaby who was angry because he wanted to take the mother and the child away. We were chilled by Pana. <laughs> it took me a year to raise money to pay for the rent for this place. And honestly, it was this dusty, empty space that, you know, I had visions for children. And, and, um, and we sort of did it together and it was really very hands-on. So Raja Azizan would actually sleep in this place where they built everything around and did the renovations. I would actually go out literally pound the streets and look for money and then Kafida, who's Raja Zizan's wife, would actually talk to the children to get them to try to buy into coming to the space. Um, so that's how it was. Um, oh, what is it? Every child is a living person and you think to yourself, oh my God, this is my responsibility because I will help determine what, what kind of head start this child has in life. I think I'm hopeful and fearful for children and I, we have really, I have rotten days, really rotten days and you have rotten days and we both say, sit there and commiserate and say we both have rotten days. And, but we have good days. Mm -hmm. We have good days when refugee children get resettled mm -hmm. and they write back and they take photos. Mm -hmm. and we have good days when we have good days when we work together. Mm -hmm. For many years, I, I know Dr. Dean now for almost eight years. She's like this huge mother in Malaysia for a lot of children because of the compassion. And she does a lot of things without any expectation. She dreams like a child and she really pursues what she believes in. So whenever she dreams, I'm the implementer. <laughs> yeah, that's our working relationship. This one means dream bigger. This one means life is beautiful. And this one is have courage and be kind. So these are my mantras. Um, so yeah, that's what I would tell them. I think that the three survival skills that all children should have, especially the kids that I work with, um, are, actually it's for adults as well, it's, it's that they have a sense of humor and being able to look at this situation and may still be able to laugh at it, even though it's horrible and bleak and gray sometimes. So that sense of humor is very important. I think the second thing they need is that education. I think I'm providing and our centers provide basic education for them to get by, but they need, it's, they need more to survive, to thrive, and to use their imagination and be able to dream big and implement what's there and use what they have and that information to, to make better choices in their lives. So an education is very important. That's a, that's a survival, it's not even a survival school, you need that education. Um, I think the third thing that all children would have is that sense of adventure and use of imagination. I think we miss that. I think I think you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes or learn empathy if you don't use your imagination. So it's important. Please, okay, come on. I have to read it. Why? Because the hurry bit. No! This one is wrong. Okay, then this one then. Then which one? I am starting to learn piano and my brother is very local. <laughs> the king's crown is gold and the king is very bold. My friend said he's a lord and he likes to play with swords. Don't move. She's running. That's it. There, my beautiful kids. <laughs> wonderful words.